Welcome to the Movie Babies. I'm Devin. And I'm Sean. And this is the Trailer Review Podcast. My voice kind of cracked when I said my name. Oh, you're growing up. <laughs> I'm going through puberty right in front of you. My movie baby is becoming a man. Oh, oh. I'm a movie Ooh. man. Put that I'm away. a movie man now, Dad. Oh, no, no. Put it away. <laughs> Son, put it away. <laughs> well, kids, we joke. <laughs> so, Do we, though? It's, it's All jokes are riddled with a little bit of realism, right? Trueness. This is true. That's like, I mean, that's the scary thing, right? Yeah. Let's hope that's not the case. It's probably the case, and that's why we find things to be funny, because we just uncomfortable laugh instead of... Well, that's funny. That will go into what I did this weekend. I wanted to forego a movie conversation to talk to you about what you did this weekend, because we basically bonded over doing this trailer based on our mutual admiration and listening to the Harmontown podcast Mm -hmm. with Anne Harmon. Of Community and Now Rick and Morty fame. And I want to hear about you going to his lecture. I think you got me on this whole podcast train from Harmontown. Mm. And yeah, I fell in love with Dan Harmon because he's he's such a freak. He's such a weirdo. But he's so honest. Yeah. And he's very open. Mm -hmm. And he's like, I'm an awful person. But I'm trying to be better. Right. And he has, like, that sort of, like, lovable quality to his, like, you know, insaneness and his, like, (laughs) political incorrectness, I guess. Sure, yeah. It is weird how he is compelling and repulsive, just like all people are, I guess. But he just composes his thoughts in a way that I think are is intriguing to both of us. Yeah, and I yeah. and I think it's the you know, you know, probably not to the same caliber, but like what I see are so a lot of like mm. well, kinda of have a garbage show, but there is <laughs> there is and we say and we're garbage people and we yeah. say the trash things, but there is like a lovable quality to it, I think. Are we trying to be good? I don't know. <laughs> it's not for us to decide. So uh, anyways, yeah. he, he was in Seattle recently because okay. apparently he found out you can do college campus tours. So was it an interview about his life or his work? It's or about his work and okay. his writing. How do you write? How do you do... The, did they talk yeah. about story circle stuff? That's my big fascination with Dan Harmon. That was like his the, her first question. Okay. It went forever, which was also surprising. It might have been an hour show. He stayed around for like two hours of like... Q&A. Oh, okay, cool. He went through the whole line. Did you ask anything? I didn't. I won Twitter. You did win Twitter. I saw that the other day. Because on our Twitter, Movie Babies tweeted him that I was going, and I was like, and I hope it's just hours of Dan rapping in his underwear. Right. And he responded to the tweet and <laughs> was like, it's the code, the rap code says, like, <laughs> if you ask, can you rap, I have to reply, do you have a beat? And he would do it. Right. So that post got like 700 likes and... How many of those people trafficked themselves to the Movie Baby page? Well, what does it find Zero? out? Zero, right? No, it's like we might blow up overnight. This is how <laughs> superstars are made, right? I see. Like overnight. But yeah, exactly. So was he pretty good natured or was he like... He's very personal too. Yeah. Like I think he cares about his... That's a cool thing happy. about someone who's kind of... I think he's probably the first to be able to like celebrate himself but he probably also recognizes that he's just like a dude and like he came from humble upbringings and like landed this great tv job and everything but like what makes those people successful is the people that get behind them and like are supportive of them i got to meet two of like people i really admire this year with dan Harmon and josh whedon and both of them are kind of similar like huge misogynists (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> <laughs> but there's that but in terms of like they both kind of have like this ego to them mm-hmm. but they're also like you can tell like they're hardest critics and like yeah yeah and they're honest about that i think that's what draws me to them i'm my hardest critic but also right. like to put myself out there and both of them are very welcoming of their fans. Because when I met gotcha. Josh Whedon, too, he was very personable. Very nerd-friendly. That is cool, and it's got to be so taxing. Like, I mean, at least with our insight of, like, that Harmontown Town documentary, like, mm-hmm. he went to all those places. He does that quite often. He gets swamped by people from his sh- weekly show. Like, 
it's gotta be so hard to manufacture the enthusiasm to put up with these fucking idiots. I get like, tired hanging out with people I like. Yeah. And like my friends. But like if there's just some annoying kid that just the whole night was like, oh, he's just gonna be here? Cool, I'm gonna have him sign everything I own. I'm gonna ask him all these details about Easter eggs on the Blu-ray and stuff. It's like, yeah. nobody wants to entertain that type of fandom. So, <laughs> the best fan question was, there was a guy in a full-fledged Sasquatch <laughs> Bigfoot costume. Okay, sure. Was it the, was it the Super, Seattle Supersonics mascot? I'll give the guy credit. It looked legit enough that it could have been. <laughs> but he goes up in line. And like, mm-hmm. what does that have to do with Van Harmon? He goes in the line and his only question is, Hey, Dan, will you smoke a joint with me? Mm-hmm. And Dan's like, yeah, sure. <laughs> and so then the guy, then the Bigfoot guy goes up to Dan on stage and hands him a joint. <laughs> because of that, like three or four other people asked Dan mm-hmm. if he would smoke with them. And he's like, yeah. See, this is why the whole, I mean, this is one of many reasons why the whole apparatus of, like, celebrity and pedestrian needs to be eradicated. Right? And so, because then, what happened is after the show, he had to walk through the crowd, Mm -hmm. and it was so awkward because, like, Bigfoot and, like, all those people are, like, swarming him. That's not how that works. Right. It's very silly. And it's, like, people need to not put people on pedestals. Clearly, with the things that are happening right now with, like, Hollywood exposing the underbelly of the shit that's been going on forever. It's like, this is a bad time for hero worship in general. Everyone we like, everybody we are, like, have affection toward their, like, artwork, they're flawed people, and, of course, tons of them are, go even worse and become horrible people because behaviors are encouraged and, like, bad patterns of heinous actions get, like, blindsided or whatever because it's like, oh, you're Tom Cruise. Like, we'll let you touch us you know in ways that we don't actually want you to and when these things get like propagated in these weird ways and i think if we just stopped like looking at tom cruise as anything other than a short shitty hatchet faced old man like who we kind of like their movies like this would would help stop it because if we don't then we get trump yeah then we get the rock as president well that's fine (laughs) i'm cool with that (laughs) It just needs to go away. I mean, and, like, especially with the rise of, you know, a couple of shitheads like you and me can, like, have little glimpses. I mean, the tiniest versions of that idea where, like, oh, some people who we don't know listen to our show. Yeah. There's a very microcosmic kind of celebrity-ish type of similar Petri dish, I could say. Yeah. And, like, there's a weird kind of level of, like, oh, I don't know this person. Oh, but now they feel like they know me, and, whoa, so this is weird. that's and... funny. So when I sat down, mm-hmm. some guy, like, a very hyperactive guy, very friendly, very talkative, sat down next to me, and he, one, he just, like, talked to me. He was like, all right, that's weird. We don't know each <laughs> We're other. We're strangers, like, dude. Do I know you? <laughs> and then he said something about... Dan Rad thing in his underwear, mm. which was the treat that I had made. Made him, yeah. And so I was like, okay, is that what's going on here? Like you like looked up who tweeted this, mm. like saw it's like, oh, it's the it's a black guy. Mm. I can point him out. Interesting. And so I, because that's happened in other places too. Mm. Well, like people have like noticed me from a thing. Yeah. And so I was like, okay, th- that's the situation that's going on here. Is that this guy? recognized me from that tweet and now he's like being like buddy buddy like sharing this thing with me like he wants to be friendly with me mm. but it seems phony because it's like you just yeah you, you just kind of got cashing in on the value of that weird um, cultural artifact but that's the weirdest thing to ever say in the world is you recognize me from that tweet <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> well, so then finally there was like a part in the conversation where they were like saying, like, oh, what are you going to ask him? And I was like, well, I'm going to ask him if he can rap. Yeah. And they're like, oh, like, in the tweet, I was like, yeah, I, I, that, I, that was me. I wrote that. And they're like, what? No way. And so then I was like, okay. Like, that kind crisis of gave averted. me crisis averted. But <laughs> I, was wor- I was worried because that has happened. And me, too, just because it is being, like, a minority in a place where there isn't a lot. Like, mm-hmm. that kind of gives me a certain celebrity status yeah. as well. Yeah. And where people are like, oh, you were at that party. I was like, that that wasn't me. Yeah, <laughs> or like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and I don't, like, that's not, we don't know each other. Like, right. 
that's not an invitation to like. Yeah, yeah, that is like a really strange. But well, anyways, it was great. <laughs> yeah, that's fun. That's part of the reason why I didn't go with you. I was, I was like, I don't want to meet anybody that I like their work right now because I'm just tired of being disappointed by how crappy the people are in yeah. real life. Like, he'd be honest about it, though, which is what I love. Yeah. Like, he would straight up be like, yeah, I did this thing and I'm an awful person. <laughs> well, I'm satisfied right. with that little Harmontown chapter of this. Mm-hmm. We got an episode this week featuring a special guest. She is a coordinator at the local chapter of the DVSAS uh, organization. She is the gallery director at Makeshift. She is the singer for the amazing punk band Scum Eating here in town. She's a film studies student expert, so she knows her movie stuff. And she's a fellow Mort Sporter we have in the house. Miss Jessica Murphy tonight. And a fellow spider hater. Yeah, we found that out too. Talked with Jessica about... What did we talk about? I don't even remember what movie Two films. About. A Wrinkle in Time. Oh yeah, that's right. The children's <laughs> book, Come to Light. That no one remembers. <laughs> and... The Quiet a, Place. It's a spooky film. It's another spooky. It's an indie horror film by Jim of The Office fame. <laughs> I'm sure he loves that. <laughs> the guy from, um, what's that, war movie? What war movie? He's in that war movie. Dunkirk? No, the one with big, big Kathy Bigelow. Oh, uh, fucking, what the hell is that movie called? He's Jim from The Office. <laughs> <laughs> this is why he's Jim from The Office, Sean. Hurt Locker. No, <laughs> Zero Dark Thirty, sorry. Yeah, Zero yeah. Dark Thirty. <laughs> Jim from Zero Dark Thirty. <laughs> he's just looking at the camera the whole time. He's like, fuck, we're in hills below. We gotta get these insurgents out of here. And he's just like, mm-hmm. Pam. He's like, I you know, know what time it is? It's Zero Dark Thirty. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, this is the show. Imagine that the ant here wants to get to her other hand. The quickest option is to walk across the street. But it turns out a straight line is not the shortest distance between two points. Not if you use a fifth dimension. It's outside of the rules we know of time and space. So, the ant arrives in my hand instantaneously. So you fall to space? More likely wrinkle it. All right, intro <laughs> battle. I really want this, I want this movie to be called The Time Wrinklers. I don't know why that sounds like a cooler. With the time wrinklers. <laughs> They're not falling through space. They're wrinkling through space. Not bending space. That seems like a weird <laughs> way to like... A, she's like, no, no, no. You don't fall through space. No, no, you, not. you wrinkle it. I was like, that makes it more confusing. Um, where to begin with this? Did you guys read the book? I, I read did. the book a long time ago and don't remember anything about it. <laughs> So basically, no, you didn't read the book. Did you read the book? No, not at all. Okay, not. I don't even know who wrote so, this book. Who wrote this book? Jessica. I definitely we, read the book. I'm now like you're our expert. questioning how much I remember <laughs> after watching the preview. I also remember seeing a play adaptation of it mm, as a child. Wow, so you got all fronts covered. Yeah, and I feel like there was like a PBS version, wasn't there? Yeah, like that a, sounds familiar. There was a TV version. Made yeah. previous to this. Yeah. Like, like a some, long time ago. Some type of like Ian Holmes plays the Oprah Winfrey character type situation. Mm-hmm. In the well, those 90s. are definitely all ladies. In the book? In the book. Okay. And, yeah. Talk to me talk to me through the book because I we watched a teaser, we watched a trailer. Yeah. I have some ideas of what this movie is about. <laughs> oh. I mean I get that it's a kid's hero's journey to find yeah. their their dad and stuff, mm-hmm. but And it's space and time. And it's kind of like a sci fi fairy tale, but like is that true to the book? Talk to yeah. me about the book. I mean, it seems like it's pretty accurate. From what I remember, there's, like, different dimensions, and those three lady characters are, like, kind of like the fates or something like that. Like, they're kind of like God. It's like, I think the universe, because of all the time travel, is, like, collapsing in on itself or something like that. Okay. Oh, boy. Now Uh, I'm, like, not remembering anything, but (laughs) I remember, like, how I felt about the book. (laughs) facts. That's yeah. how I feel. That's really funny because that's how I feel too. It's like oh, I remember enjoying that book mm-hmm. and liking it quite a bit and then watching this trailer I'm like, 
realizing I don't know anything about this book. Yeah, I don't remember the plot now that I'm watching. <laughs> have we fell into some sort of time wrinkle? Like a Channel Zero <laughs> creepypasta. The cre- wrinkle in time never existed. It just, you yeah. guys made it up. It's the wrinkle in time. <laughs> so it doesn't resemble what you read. Does it seem like a totally, like, did they riff on the idea and go a totally different direction with the movie? Is that what's happening here? I think no. there's just more CG than, yeah. than my imagination had. Yeah. Wasn't there, like, on the cover, like, a some sort of horse unicorn thing he's riding? I That's all I remember. I, do not I that. feel like there's some truth to that. Oh, on the book cover? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Who wrote the book? Oh, oh you're going to make me say okay. it? I don't, I mean, it's a French lady. Okay. It's not It's not it's Mad- lady. Madeleine La Ingle. Okay. But it's not but, like the lady that wrote Fifty no. Shades or something like that. It's not no. like Stephanie Myers. We got okay. an all-girl crew here. The director, the writer, all women. Okay. Awesome. What, what, who's the director? The director is, oh, God, Ava DuVernay. Okay. What do they do? And she's African-American. Huh. And I have a fact for you. Let me, I gotta look it up though. <laughs> then you don't have no facts for me. <laughs> well, I knew I have one. It's just in my, buried in my fanny pack. I have to like reach in there and like Mary Poppins this real fast. So she is the first female African American director and third female overall to helm a movie which has a budget over a hundred million dollars. Did we okay. get all that? Whoa. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That is right. so much money. That's crazy. A lot that of it money. Took this long. <laughs> A lot of money, and I, yeah, that's a cool fact, but this movie's not going to do well, right? I don't know. I don't know. know. Jessica? Do movies do well anymore? (laughs) That's a good point, too. (laughs) If it's not, if you're not a comic book movie, how are you going to do? Also, did this, this didn't come out, or when is it coming out? Like, right before Christmas? March. No, that's stupid. This is a Christmas movie. <laughs> see, I thought this it was a, a Christmas movie. Yeah, this is a movie you see with your parents on Christmas. Yeah. Exactly. Like, it's like Harry Potter. Exactly. It like, has a very Harry Potter feel, too, with the plot. The plot, because it is an older book, it's a little played out at this point, where it's like, light versus darkness. You're the chosen one. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's a little matrixy. Yeah, and so it's all the Even beats. some of those rooms were a little matrixy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, so all the beats are the things we are so familiar with, but it's like they're tapping into the source material, but because that's people have stolen and yanked from that. You feel like we've already seen this. I feel like I've seen this, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I feel like they were counting on like a millennial blockbuster. Like that's my feel. Like they were like seeing all those buds, like BuzzFeed. 90s lists and they were like <laughs> yeah. let's get it on this oh, and get okay. people to nostalgia watch it do you remember the time wrinklers <laughs> buzzfeed 15 facts if disney was gonna throw a jillion dollars at your favorite childhood book what would it be the last vampire <laughs> <laughs> the last vampire. Is that Anne Rice? No, it was uh, Christopher Pike. Okay. Really bad fantasy. Mm-hmm. Uh, it was like one of those like you could buy it at like the book fair, but it was like a little racy. And okay. like, so this is like a step ahead of the Fifty Shades of Grey. Yeah, it's it was like kind of like gay sexy Twilight. Interesting. Like, wow. <laughs> like there were like gay characters and like. The main vampire, like, saves um, this guy who has AIDS by, like, half-turning him into a vampire. Oh. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. I, I found the cure. That would be my pick. <laughs> I found the cure for AIDS. It's vampires. Yeah. Is that, was that a kid's book, or was it? It was, like, tween okay. book. Like, well, young adult literature. Gonna have to look into this. Has there been an adaptation of it? Do I don't know? think so. Mm-hmm. I don't think there's really ever been any film adaptations of Christopher Pike books. You need to get some rights to these. Yeah, I probably should. <laughs> Buy up these rights. They were all the great. Day. <laughs> Jessica, did you ever read those books, Teenage... Hey, Joe. Hey, Joe. It's like the Teenage <laughs> Fairy books, but it's like the fairy was like very like kind of sassy and foul mouth, and there was like I do of, not remember that. I don't remember. And there's like, there's a kind of like, they talk about sex and like, like, whoa, but it's like a teen book. Yeah. Like from our age or from our generation? It was like, <laughs> I was a teenager with a fairy. 
I don't know. <laughs> uh, okay. Okay, you're making this up. I Google, it. Google it. Christopher <laughs> Pike also had a book that was like Nietzsche's Eternal Return in like a teenager story. They like went to save the world by like going so far back in time. They went to the present again and like met themselves. Oh, wow. We need to get on this guy. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Highly suggest of all young adult literature. <laughs> That's fun. I have some questions about the fifth dimension. Not knowing anything about science. Mm-hmm. Looking to you guys to help me hammer these details out. Mm. First mistake. Okay. Is the fifth dimension just time travel? Is that what it is? Fifth dimension is time. You know, three dimensions is like physical space. Mm-hmm. And then... Which we're talking like height, width, Wait, or no, fourth depth. dimension is time. No, no, no. Here, here it is. Here it is. Then the fifth dimension <laughs> is something else. No, like I got it, I got it. The fifth dimension... Is an American popular music vocal group. God damn it. <laughs> Pop, R&B, soul, jazz, light opera, and Broadway. I have some of their records in that collection over there. I thought you were going to drop like some Fifth Harmony jokes on this or like some new direction. <laughs> I mean, there were so many things to choose from. There was just like, I was just plucking from the fruit tree. Fourth dimension is time. That yeah, sounds correct. Fourth dimension is time because fifth dimension is wrinkling time. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> we did. It. Also, I'm really confused about why it's wrinkles. Like, I still now that I think back about that, I don't think that makes sense. Because like time bender makes more sense. Is it well, like wrinkling? Because then you put it, you can put it back. You can like I iron guess, time. But it's like the Mobius strip thing, right? Like that's what. Tell me what that is. It's that that the spider. Example is like it was, it was an ant. Oh, an ant. Sorry. <laughs> oh, geez, you can't tell the difference between ants and spiders. I thought you went to college, Jessica. Theo explained to me. I taught college. Uh, oh, okay, that's different. Um, <laughs> no, like the Mobius strip thing is where you take a piece of paper and like you do the example of where like oh, so you have I mean, or Mobius strip is like the infinity symbol. Okay. But like you fold, you know, when you fold it in half and then mm-hmm. it touches, that's like going through. Yeah, you're not wrinkling yeah. it. You're yeah, bending it. Like yeah. wrinkles, I think of like like maybe the waves or something, or like you know a shirt wrinkles, or like yeah. foreskin wrinkles. Yeah. Like, is there a wrinkle go. in the guy, dick time? <laughs> she sure did just whipped her dick out and then like here's how time travel works. We need works. to get this part to this part. <laughs> You fold your dick in half. <laughs> <laughs> when you do it in a knot, that's uh-huh. a wrinkle in time. What is the uh, costume design idea that's going through these kids? I'm, that, that part was the most jarring to me because it did look like an expensive movie until I saw the characters' costumes, mm-hmm. and I was like, everyone looks silly. Yeah. The budget did not go in costumes because they're like, oh, shoot, they're aliens. Oprah, come here. We paste some pearls on Oprah and gave her gold lipstick and then they that look was it. like they're going to the Academy Awards. <laughs> but I don't like are are they supposed to be aliens? No, I don't think so. But it did take me to like the third watch through to realize that was Reese Witherspoon. So they she did looks different. They did do a good job of disguising mm-hmm. her. Well while we're on the topic, <laughs> what do we feel about this big three they chose. It's a weird casting. Well, I mean, Oprah's pretty Oprah obvious. Oprah makes so. sense. Oprah makes total sense. And then we got Mindy. Mindy's kind of like a, a burgeoning Oprah, right? She's like she's an like, Indian what? Oprah. Is she she's Indian? running her own show. She's yeah. like, to hearken back to the Oprah theme song from when <laughs> I was, or not the theme song, but the commercial when I was a kid, you know, the babies are dancing, Mindy's on, like, she's stealing the show. So then uh, is Reese Witherspoon kind of our, like, Hmm. Legally well, Blonde, really? I guess she did start that whole, like, production studio or whatever, didn't she? Like, For Wild or whatever? Yeah. yeah. Like, I mean, I guess she's, like, kind of a feminist icon. Well, didn't she sort of. have her own business in Legally Blonde? <laughs> she was a lawyer. I think she was a lawyer. Yeah. There we go. That's, like, That's a... not in real life, though. <laughs> I felt like this movie would be better. Okay, let's break down my problem with this movie. Uh-huh. <laughs> it's so lifeless. Yeah. Like, everything is so lifeless. Oprah's giving her line. is like, oh, you got to watch out for the darkness. It's faster than the light sometimes. It's like, Oprah, <laughs> give me some, like, Oprah! Like, I need some energy here. You like, get a wrinkle. You get a wrinkle. Everyone gets a wrinkle. And I want, like, legally blonde over there. Like, she should have blonde hair. She should be wearing, like, a, a pink, like, power suit. And she's, you know... You want them to just be characters from other things that they've been in. I 
I just That's want what I'm hearing. some flavor in this <laughs> Wrinkle right. in Time. Because I just looked it up. The original books were made in 1960. Oh, really? I have it in my head that they were like definitely written in the 80s. Interesting. No, these books are old. Okay. And it looks old. <laughs> um, real quick. Yeah. On the IMDb or on the Wikipedia or whatever you're on. I'm not on anything. I was just you're making using my brain. But what are these characters called? Are they like yeah, hmm, what are height, their weight, names? depth, or time, space? It's like clad old light. beauty. It's like... Yeah, yeah. exactly. <laughs> uh, we got <laughs> Mrs. What's It is really s- s- with her spoon. Okay. Mrs. Who is Mindy. Okay. okay. And Mrs. Witch, that's W-H-I-C-H, is Oprah. So it's like a who's on first joke? <laughs> <laughs> That's how old this movie no. is. Which no. is on which? That was like stone like cutting eggs. <laughs> I don't know about this, guys. I, I, they should have got Beyonce, right? Yeah, yeah. It's, it needs a little more... It should have been like Beyonce, Oprah, and Michelle Obama. Whoa. <laughs> Done. I love it. There it is. Box office gold. I'd be there on opening night. So... Chris Pine is kind of like a Carl Sagan kind of guy. He's like discovering so. some kind. He's like a scientist who's discovered this time folding thing. It swallowed him up. It's he's dangerous. in another dimension, perhaps the fifth dimension. We don't know. The little girl has been told that she's the only one who can one stop the darkness and two save her dad. Is that true? <laughs> like, <laughs> why are we always giving little kids this massive responsibility to like solve cataclysms? These. Gods are like, our light isn't powerful enough, but hey, little kid, yeah. we, you're the only one that can save us. You're not good at dodgeball, but we are kind <laughs> of putting all of our chips on you. I remember being upset about that when I was a kid. Like, I would watch all of these movies where the mm-hmm. kids like were like, no, actually, I will be the one to fix everything. And being like, that's not how life works. I just want to <laughs> play video games. I'm a child. Also, if you try to tell people what's up when you're a child, no one listens to you. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Do you... Okay, so do we think it's time to roll back this, like, in fairy tales and in, in, like, children's literature and stuff when we're trying to, like, empower the kids? Is it a bad idea to, like, imbue them with a false sense of their ability to fix things? Like, is this actually an unhealthy thing to continue perpetuating? Sean, so much so... (laughs) That we need to open up, we dust it off, the movie babies band list. This, this is the tome. This trope of you're the only one who can stop it. Yeah. I I tune out right away once I hear that. It's like, and disinterested. Well, isn't it just chronic individualism too? Like, isn't that a terrible message to send to kids? Like you are more special than everyone else in the world. Yeah. You are the most important. Fuck teamwork. Fuck everything And else. they even put her on a team <laughs> of, like, her. I'm guessing her little brother and her friend. Yeah. But it's like, you guys are subservient. This is the chosen one. Like, it is very Matrix-y. Like, should we just roll? Just, just push pause on this? Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm done. And speaking of which, this trailer also trusts nothing. Trust, Trust no, no one. one. You're right. We already banned that. We put it on the movie Baby's <laughs> ban list. So, Jessica, there is a long-standing tradition of when we hear the same lines and trailers over and over again, and we get sick of them, we put them on something called the movie Baby ban list, which just means we get irritated when we hear them. It really ha- there's no consequence. <laughs> the consequence. You're gonna write letters to all the directors. Eventually. I re- I do this podcast, and I think you should stop. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I signed it in blood. Devin, am I hearing that you yeah. want to? Propose that we add just children saving the world in general to the movie Baby's Band list? <laughs> I don't want to limit it to children because I'm sick of anyone saving the world. Just by chosen themselves. ones. You're sick of chosen ones. Yeah, I'm sick chosen of chosen ones. ones. Okay. So the, you're the only one who can stop it? That's not true. That's never true. You're with a team, so we know that's not true. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. If you were the only one, Oprah and your brothers and sisters wouldn't be with you. Yeah. yeah. Full mm-hmm. communism. No chosen ones. So we gotta vote. We gotta yay or nay this. I'm on. I'm yay. Yeah, I'm with you. Oh yeah, no chosen ones. It's unanimous. <laughs> Banned. Uh, bye bye. No more chosen ones ever again, Hollywood. You're gonna have to go to a new 
wet reservoir of entertainment. I want one where it's like, look, we tried to get other people. You're the only one left. <laughs> oh, you want default chosen one. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we tried everyone else. They died. We tried Chris Pine. He's stuck in another dimension. So now we got his bratty kid. <laughs> Wouldn't that have been better? Uh, yeah. Jessica, give me some highlights of this trailer. I feel like we're dogging on it. Um, I don't know if it's a highlight, but I'm still thinking about that like artichoke dragon thing. What was that? I don't know. It was like a giant blanket. Is that, yeah. from, is that from the book? I have no idea. Okay. We don't know. Okay. Sure. Okay. I'm, I'm going to leave that one alone. So there's the light, and these gals are defenders of the light. And I guess the light we're using is like this metaphorical, like the physics of light and how light travels and time travels and blah, blah, blah. But they say at the end of the trailer that darkness is faster than light. So the darkness is the bad guy in this. So this is like yes. a legend where Tim Curry plays the darkness. Mm-hmm. Are we going to get a big Storm Reed devil guy? Not only is it like that, it's a never-ending story. It's the darkness. I thought the same thing, too, but it's the nothing. But it's, it's the not nothing. the same effect. Yeah, 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 yeah. The storm thing coming. Right. It looked exactly the same. Because in the nothing, it's just this big blackness following them. Yeah. And in this one, it's a dirt tornado. Yeah. <laughs> this is like an avalanche is following them. And yeah. we're, we're stuck in that. And it's like, oh, we better watch out. It's the darkness. I'm like, well, it's not. I mean, that's more like a muddy color than the <laughs> darkness. But they can't do darkness because they did it in a never-ending story. Also, isn't that the same theme as True Detective? Like, at the end, it's like the yeah. lightness. Oh, yeah. I, I must have fell asleep. I, I put that <laughs> TV series out of my head like you guys put this book out of your head. <laughs> it's like, I know I watched it, but... Don't ask me. There's this whole about light it. and dark thing at the yeah. end, and it it gets really cheesy. I don't know that we have a lot of positive things to say about this trailer, but should we rate it? I mean, I guess we should rate this trailer. Let's rate it. So, Jessica, we've got a system of rating our trailers. It's not just did you like it or did you not like it, mm-hmm. though it kind of just is. But we <laughs> disguise that binary system by giving you a three op three pronged option. Oh, okay. There used to be a Coke ad that ran in front of movies called, like, We're All the Same When the Lights Go Out, and it was very silly, and they pulled it because it was kind of offensive. But we're using some lingo from that commercial to rate the trailer. If you were into this and you want to go see this movie based on this trailer, mm-hmm. you're going to say, like a lot. So you cool if I scream, like a lot. If you are like, I liked the trailer okay, I had some beefs with it, maybe I need to see the second trailer, or maybe, like, there's some things that this isn't just selling me, but I, 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 we'll see. On the fence, you're going to say, in space with zombies. In space. In space with zombies. If you didn't care for this trailer at all, and it turns you off to the movie-going experience, you're going to say, I love robots. I love robots. <laughs> if you could rate this trailer using that system and tell me why you chose that option, I would love to hear it. I think in space with zombies, was that correct? That's the, the middle. Right? Yeah, I mean, I like I would see this if someone else paid for it, like, uh, <laughs> for sure. Like, like, a, like a movie pass. Like again, why I think it should have been a Christmas movie is because like if my family were like, we want to do, let's go I watch this movie. Is the, it this or w- no whatever? Movie. Using the Doug excuse. <laughs> like if oh, it was yeah. this or a Pixar film, like definitely I would pick this. Oh really? Okay. I also hate Pixar. Pixar. I know it's controversial. Oh, that's <laughs> did you go see Coco? I I honestly haven't seen a Pixar movie since Cars, and I think that that is why I hate oh, Pixar. Oh yeah, you can't. <laughs> did Cars come out in like two thousand one or something? Oh, yeah. Okay, so you, you got some catching up to do. <laughs> I hated Cars so much I like swore off. Pixar. At least see Coco. <laughs> I think okay. Coco is top tier. Okay. Right. I've also had people like try to sell me on Toy Story three, but I've never seen it. No, you would. You'd to get the full effect of Toy Story three. You'd have to kind of do the other two and kind of like. I've seen the first one. Yeah, but you didn't do the second one. Yeah. Is I it, would do Coco. Coco's a good standalone, okay. like... Maybe he'll sell me back on Pixar yeah. again. <laughs> Is it safe to assume that you don't... You've kind of grown out of kids-centric entertainment? That's not true, because I, like, like Adventure Time. Okay. Yeah, I don't know. I feel like this movie has its place, because it's just, like, that innocuous entertainment. Mm. It would be great to see in a giant theater where everything, like, shakes when the sound is loud. Okay. You like the you like the 
visceralness of yeah, like the movie going. Yeah, experience. I mean, like if you saw like a big ass theater, like it wouldn't be like the worst thing. Mm. No, the place for this trailer and this movie for me is like in the background of my house while I'm doing other things. <laughs> like while you're babysitting a child. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like they're watching mm, it. You're and, doing something. And I'm like phone. playing on my phone yeah. and pretending and getting paid. <laughs> I feel like, because the reason why I say that is because I feel like you could go in and out of this movie and you would not be lost. Because yeah. we've seen this movie yeah. before. And I feel like the other movies did it better. Oh, never Ending Story. Mm-hmm. It's a perfect film. Is it weird to suggest that maybe this book did it first and those uh, the movies robbed <laughs> the book? Well, that's what I'm saying is that... Too little, too late. I, I feel bad because like this is a beloved series. Mm-hmm. But oh, it's a series? Yeah, it's yeah. a whole series. Oh, I did not know that. Interesting. Yeah. And I feel bad, too, because, like, the, like, the director, the writer, like, it's like, yeah, we're doing it. And then it's like, but this is, like, this isn't going to do well. This doesn't look like it has the legs of a Harry Potter, like, no. franchise or, like, a Hunger Games to me. Like, mm-hmm. it seems, like, pretty low rent. Like, I, I thought this would definitely be, like, a one and done movie. So that's interesting. It's not fun. You have Zach. <laughs> Gaffinanakis. Mm-hmm. You do have that Gaffinanakis. Yeah, I was he's, confused about that. He's being weird, and like the characters are so bland that they don't know how to react. They're just like, "Whoa, oh, this guy, <laughs> huh? You see him?" They're just mugging. There's no like funny lines or anything. Yeah, it's like he didn't do anything. Like yeah. it, it's just that. It's gonna be. I think Jessica, you're right. It's gonna be the movie that will not offend your grandmother. It yeah. will not offend your nephew. It will not offend you. Yeah. You'll go and you'll see the movie. You'll forget you saw the movie, and that'll be that. And then next year when they make another one, Time Wrinklers 2, you'll buy another <laughs> ticket and you'll rinse and repeat. So I'm I'm falling through the crack on this one. I'm uh, I'm giving it the bottom. You love robots. I love robots. I I wanted to be excited about this trailer, and it actually made me less excited about this movie. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna jump on that option too. I also love robots. One, no new twist on the child adventure mm-hmm. trope. I, 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 though that it is science-y and fairy tale I see where they were trying to do that, but it didn't hook me. The science-y stuff felt very Bill Nye episode, and the fairy, and the fairy tale stuff seemed very, like, labyrinth or whatever. It's like, like Avatar. Yeah, yeah, it was just very kind of, like... And then all the special effects stuff just seemed like Doctor Strange or, like, Inception-type mm-hmm. things of, like, how... Time and space is bending. Like, I've seen all this shit before, so no new spin. That bums me out. I did like how, in my mind, it was more like labyrinthy than never ending story because I was like, oh, Chris Pine's like Toby. He's like stuck in the thing and she's got to go <laughs> rescue her dad like he's a baby. <laughs> the sweet dreams are made of these. Oh, uh, yeah. We can talk about bummer. that being a horrible, horrible choice. It might be oh one God. of the worst ones I've seen. Oh. Sean, every time we record a new episode, we fire up the new trailer, we get a new one of taking like a popular song and thus murdering it. Mm-hmm. Also, and, it's already in a different movie. Yeah, I was going to say. Which was a really bad context because wasn't that that movie where all the girls are like sexually exploited? Sucker punch. And like, yeah, yeah. John Hamm like rapes that girl. Like, they, yeah, it was a bad that, pair. Yeah. For a children's movie. Yeah. It's a bummer. <laughs> it's a bummer. Uh, leave leave uh, covering Sweet Dreams to Marilyn Manson. I think I think he did <laughs> <Agreed>. it fine. <laughs> your, your movie is Wrinkle in Time. In your trailers, you're hammering in this fifth dimension. Mm-hmm. Release the movie in February, mm-hmm. and you play Age of Aquarius. <laughs> <laughs> it's so easy. Uh, I like that. I like that. Gosh, I feel a little bit bad just kicking this movie while it was down, but yeah. I also they think we were right about this. Yeah. Hollywood needs to learn. I don't know what the lesson is. I feel like they're trying to make up for how horrible they are with this movie, like being mm-hmm. like, "Yeah, women of color." We got mm-hmm. look, yeah, look at our but, look at our goddesses here. Yeah, but it just just reeks of like tokenism, basically. Yeah. Well, I, <laughs> what's the not Bechtel test? The other one that Lane's always kind of mentioning that these movies do not fit. 
is the thing where it's like, is your black character a magical creature? Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. I can't remember what it's called. Definitely does seem like, well, okay, but Oprah's in a position of power here. She's a powerful being. She's the black character who's got magical powers. Wait a minute. Isn't this just <laughs> like... <laughs> this doesn't... This doesn't normalize anything. Yeah, it's like, just that golf movie. Ah, uh, yeah. What's that one? <laughs> the golf? Happy yeah. Gilmore? No, the one where the guy's like the golf dude. and he's like, No, the magical <laughs> black guy in the golf movie. I can't remember what it's called. Magic Mike? Baby <laughs> <Amy> Driver. <laughs> um, I'm going to think of it in like an hour. <laughs> yeah, I did it in. That's perfect. What is it? Legend of Beggar Vance? Yes, Beggar Vance! Joe got it. Joe got it. Slam dunk ball. Tell me about this movie. (laughs) I've never seen it. I just have read a lot of people using that as a reference point for like whenever you have that sort of like like vaguely plantation y type character, but they try to like make it seem like it's not racist because he's special. Okay. He's like, the wise old man. Yeah. Type. Yeah. But he has like a pretty racist voice probably. I see. Yeah, it's yeah, like it's accent weird. thing. Yeah. I mean, because it's like, it's Oprah, so you know she's like, I would, do, I don't have to do this. Like, you don't, I don't need Disney money. But again, yeah. it's like, this book, I think, is popular among people. And there hasn't been, like, a big attempt to do this movie. So I feel like this is a good name. Mm -hmm. Like, this is a good grab by whoever's producing this. Mm -hmm. And they just dropped the ball on it. Mm. Well, maybe they're just shitty trailers. Maybe it'll, like, maybe the content of, like, the, what, the lessons that the kid learns in the story, as this stuff unfolds, it'll be more appealing to me. But maybe they do just have to package it and just, like, well, it's a Disney movie. Like, let's make it as easy to swallow as possible. I don't know. Time Wrinklers is a cooler name. <laughs> They're like on a mission. They got machine guns. We're gonna wrinkle this time! <laughs> like, that's a movie. Um, that's... That's a movie. <laughs> but it's not this movie. <laughs> that was A Wrinkle in Time. Okay, intro battle. Shh, shh, shh. Oh, sorry. We're no clapping. We can't talk. How are we going to do the episode? I don't know, but I don't want to be haunted. People if... podcast in this world. Oh, no. I guess they can't. <laughs> they can't. And it's a better world for it. <laughs> I feel like if we talk too loud, then the Joe and Jen monsters are going to come down and <laughs> yell at us. Yeah, no. We just watched A Quiet Place. They're, they're like the nanny of our <laughs> cinematic universe. What a relaxing nap I just had. It feels good, yeah. It's like a like real good, nice change of pace to not have like a chill cover of any dumb song or pretty much any dialogue at all. Although like... we kept singing Sweet Dreams <laughs> are made of these. As and the... it works. Yeah, I it, hope you know, it did the work, folks so... at home play that song over. They must have had to, like, send Paramount Pictures into a different studio and be like, the trailer's in this room, and then, like, lock them in there to, like, to get send, approval. To send this out. <laughs> yeah. You're not putting a cover in this it's trailer? Can't, this can't be done. <laughs> I know, it's a rare movie these days. That, I mean, so it's all action movies have them. Uh-huh. All kids' movies have them. All animated movies have them. Mm-hmm. It's a rare type of trailer that doesn't have these. And the only one that came to recent memory was the movie that this movie actually reminds me. Actually, two movies. Mm-hmm. One is Mother, mm-hmm. that yes. J Law movie, which had just like the weird pizzicato strings. There was yep. no weird cover in that trailer. That was great. And this kind of has that kind of vibe too. I guess to the country house or whatever. But the other one that I can't remember the name of, the like Contagion movie where the family's in the farmhouse and you can't go in the red door. I asked Kyle specifically what the name of that movie was twice this week, and I still can't remember it. The Red Door. Uh, it might be the, the space movie that came out a while ago, where they were, like, in the farmhouse. Oh, do you have a clicky pen? Oh, whoops, I didn't mean to do that. <laughs> oh my, <laughs> <God>. <laughs> my eyes <laughs> went. That will ignite 
Devin will become the monster and so he will destroy your quiet place. <laughs> yeah, it's like oh, shit. you can be as loud as you want, but like my ears <laughs> tune into that, and then that's yeah. It's game over. I'm so sorry. No, it's, it's okay. okay. It's you don't okay. know, and yeah. it's a natural instinct, you know. Pens are for clicking. That's why they put those on. So we'll have Emily Blunt will have no clicky pens in her household in a quiet place. Jessica, do you want to explain? The quiet place to us, what we just viewed here. So they are in a farmhouse, and it seems like they're building some sort of contraptions because there's clearly monsters because there's a big scratch on the wall. It's a big-ass scratch. (laughs) And they can't talk, obviously. Then the kid does something dumb and knocks over a lantern, and then the monster comes, apparently. Yeah. We don't see it. Seems like a pretty simple premise, and I like it. That's yeah. all I need. Yeah. Oh, monsters come when you're loud? Perfect. That's your whole yeah. movie? I'm actually I in. do have some questions. <laughs> I oh, have a lot of questions. You? I would imagine you guys do. Hit me with your questions. I'll answer all of them. All right. Well, the first one is, what's with him using a lantern? Is electricity a part of this equation of being loud? Well, yeah, because that light turned... Well, I don't know. They had electricity. They had electricity. That red light turned on. That's true. And the monster seems to be controlling the lights, so we got, like, some stranger things. No, Uh, I thought it was, like, a trip mechanism. Oh, like, the lights are going because they... Yeah. Okay, yeah. That makes sense. Well, yeah, you're right. They do have electricity. The the lantern was a a bad move. They even took the time to replace the game pieces with pieces of felt. Yeah. I loved the fact that they used pom poms. <laughs> like, pom-poms? I want to replace all game pieces with pom poms now. <laughs> I do kind of have an urge to have like a silent night where it's yeah. like, let's play silent games with little, yeah, pom poms. What is pom poms? Yeah. What is no, that? Pom pom is? The pom poms. What like, is it? At, What's it for? You know, like if you have a hat and there's a pom pom. pom. At the oh, top. Oh boy. Sean, okay. <laughs> it's, like, it's like you get a bunch of yarn. Okay. And you tie a string around it, and then you... No, no, that's it two confusion points. <laughs> First you get a palm, and then you get a palm, you get Sean. another palm. Okay. You put them together. So they do take very much precaution to be very quiet. Curious what their policy on farting is in this household. <laughs> what happens? Well, yeah. number one, beans are banned. No, can't yeah. no beans. No. I saw they had a lot of salad on the table, but, like, how did they chop that lettuce? Yeah. Yeah, that makes no sense. No Lacroix, because I belch every time. <laughs> Why did you open the can? Lacroix. Yeah, no, you couldn't. You just the gotta, world without Lacroix. They've all got tummy aches. Like that's why Emily <laughs> Blunt's in the tub at the end. She's just like, oh, I got so much farts I got to do, but I can't let them out. Oh, is that what was that movie where the like guy the guy has all the farts? Uh, in Rocket it? Man. No, it's <laughs> no, he's in a space suit oh, and he farts. Yeah, and he there's that too. Bigger. No, but it's like a serious movie. It's the one where Rocket Man. <laughs> no. He's like the king or something of like oh god. Oh, the king of that. Movie? No. Oh, and then the the guy has to like pull his stomach and all his farts come. Out. Should what? I get Joe? Should I get Joe down here to? <laughs> okay, you can't. This out? Yeah, you, it's a serious movie where the guy pulls his stomach to fart a lot. No, another guy comes and like bear hugs him so yeah. he can fart. Whoa, I gotta look up this movie. That it's like a like... based on a real story. Like I don't remember what movie. It's How did they do this? Yeah, any any bathroom yeah. related stuff. Like, do they have a silencer around the toilet bowl? Like. Or did they saran wrap their seat? Like, what? how are they doing these things? How quiet do they really have to be? That's a good question, mm-hmm. too. Because they're, like, breathing. Yeah. Like, you breathe loud. Or, like, can I just whisper something if I'm really close to you? Yeah. What are the rules? What are the know. rules of this year? Well, she was doing sign language, so... Oh, they were doing sign language. Yeah. Okay. We do know knocking over glass and starting a, no a fire. No. Mm-hmm. That's a no. That I think will, it's a no-no in a regular house, though. That will bring you the monster. You put that out really fast. And oh, yeah. I... They've done that before. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> again? How many times? You but, can't do any yard work because no. you can't get out your buzzsaw, which is actually cool for me because I bet they get to sleep in late on the weekends and well, that's very tight. That brings up a question because is it... How do they wake up? The whole world like this. Because if the whole world yeah. like that, they're screwed. 
No, yeah. So I did a 180 on this, I feel like, because at <laughs> first I was like, I hate this premise. Why don't they just fucking move? Like, I don't understand. <laughs> Get out of that neighborhood. Like, that's why I feel about every haunted house yeah. movie. I'm like, fuck it, just move. Mm. I've moved, like, 20 times in my adult life. <laughs> just move. <laughs> um, like, but I think the whole world is like, like, that's got to be the case. Yeah. yeah. Like, it's aliens came or okay. something. So, let's okay. get to that. Yeah. What is this monster? I have this terrible feeling that it's just going to be the, um, what, like, oh, God, I'm so bad at remembering movie names now. What's the the shaky camera movie? Blair Witch. No. No, no, no. I know what you mean. Uh, <laughs> Chronicle. No. It's the other J. one. J.J. Abrams or something? Yeah. Oh. Star Trek. Cloverfield? Yeah. yeah. I just imagined it being ruined by being the Cloverfield monster at the end. <laughs> All <laughs> these horror films, yeah, they hinge on, for me, the monster. Okay. And nine out of ten times, I hate the monster, yeah. and then I hate the movie. What type of monster would make this movie more fun for you? One that you see, one you don't see, it's a big wolf, it's a big dragon. When I don't I, want to see it. You don't want to see the monster? Mm-mm. You don't want to see it. Mm-mm. So a ghost. That's a ghost, No, Jessica. like, I just don't... I <laughs> you never... You want it to be a, a, there, but you just yeah. don't want to have to see yeah. it as an eyes. Sure. That's a good idea. What I thought of right away was a giant wild thing. Because you see, the first thing you see are the big claw marks. Right. I'm like, that thing's huge then. Oddly, that did not disrupt any of the other space in yes. that room. Yeah, like, the staircase the is fine. fine. Maybe he's like a teddy bear with just one really big hand. <laughs> Everything is really soft. <laughs> it's just really small, except for the <laughs> one arm. He's just falling over. Oh, he's called Bear Claw. That's, the scrape just got there because he slipped down the stairs and he was just like, oh! <laughs> he's very clumsy because of that big ass hand he has to drag. It's around. just it, this is just a Paddington movie, but Paddington <laughs> has like a big claw yeah, that he can't get off. This is a Paddington two that we got. What if it's um? What if it's a sequel to Iron Giant and Iron Giant's mm. like been turned on again and he's in mm. like atomic kill mode. And because they're like at the farmhouse and everything, and like he's just like coming through. And anytime he hears a sound, because he's got like sonar hearing or whatever, he like comes in and like nabs him. I want this movie to be something like that, where it's like at the eleventh hour, like right before the credits roll, you find out it's Godzilla movie, or you find out it's like in a world we know. This movie has the MBCU. That's the movie babies. Cinematic universe. <laughs> I didn't know there was a C in it. Okay, cool. Written all over it because the other movie I thought of too was the Insidious film we just watched, mm-hmm. where they had a monster that has key hands, key and hands. and he puts the key in your throat and he turns it and then you can't talk anymore. Turns off your voice. He's Turn off your stealing voice. the voice. I wish I could do it to you sometimes. What do you? Mean? Clearly, it's <laughs> that guy. Yes, um, <laughs> talking to you. Um, that makes more sense. <laughs> I could see that being an insidious setup. Right? Yeah. I haven't seen that trailer, but that description makes sense to me. I mean, that was basically, I just, yeah, I just nailed that trailer. I also thought it was, like, going to be signs. It could be it, signs. It has it's a very sign yeah. feel. Or like, the I village. I feel even. like the girl is going to save, like, the day. So maybe kids? This, yeah. Because kids save the day. God damn it. <laughs> kids save the day. Just like the day. signs, like... <laughs> Where there's something that she does that everyone thinks is wrong. And the then, water, putting yeah. the glasses of water all over yeah. the house, yeah. That gets referenced in this house a lot because we put down glasses of water all over the place. Um, so. I had roommates that called me Signs. It's <laughs> like a nickname. Because it's not I the character's would... name. Yeah, but no one remembers what the girl's name is. <laughs> this does have a very shyamalan thing. I feel like it could easily have like a twist ending and mm-hmm. be like, oh, it's Clifford the Big Red Dog all or along. Like, oh, you could have been around <laughs> the whole time. He's... Yeah, right. Dad was just like fucking with everybody. They're like, I'm going to move you out to the farm and do this mind control experiment. <laughs> and that will teach I... you not to be too loud. <laughs> it's the rest of development. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's at, it's a movie, it's at, the whole movie's a teaser for the new season of Arrested Development. Well, this was written, directed, and starring. John K. from The Office, so it's yeah. it's got some some sitcom. Let's <laughs> well, uh, talk about that. So yeah, the director is Jim. Yeah. Oh, he made it. He, In he wrote it and it? directed it. Oh. And his wife is Emily Blunt, and she co-stars with this, which is also very mother, because J. Law and oh, what's yeah. his for her? 
doing mm. weird. So it's stuff. all about the <laughs> Bible. Know. That's how it's I all about God. Do you think it's God that's haunting them, and God's finally like, yeah. "You humans, you're always so loud. <laughs> Tone it down. <laughs> Enough of the covers." Jim um, <laughs> does seem like a good lead for this, I, because. I what do we know Jim for? I never watched The Office, so I don't know what well, we know Jim for. <laughs> Looks at the camera a lot. Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. yeah. Okay. did it. Yeah. <laughs> so He's got a, good facial expressions. Right? So in a yeah. movie where you can't talk, who are you going to get? It's either him or um, Mr. Bean. <laughs> <laughs> All right. This was Mr. Bean. <laughs> Let's recast A Quiet Place <laughs> as a Mr. Bean movie. <laughs> Car real loud. <laughs> and like, oh, no. <laughs> Turning on the record player. When he like light the kid would be like, oh, we want to play games. Trying to get the lamp. And they're like, no, no, no. He's like juggling it. And he's about to drop it, but then he catches it. And it's just like that for an hour and a half. I like that. I like that better. So there was another movie. Did we watch The Gift together? I think the, we um... talked about this. Yeah, we're, well, no, can I keep confusing it? Is that the one with the Arrested Development guy and the keep... Yes, inviting and him into Joel the... Egerton like yeah. wrote, directed, and starred yeah. in it. Yeah, yeah it's yeah. got that kind of vibe for me too. I do like it when people who have like paid their Hollywood dues get to make a little indie movie, mm-hmm. and they get to do all the parts of it. Because I'm, what's different than when uh, I don't know one of the Marvel people do it is like they keep it so they use their budget well and they keep the stakes low enough to like work within their means. And I find those movies to be way more, like, entertaining than when people are trying to stretch out beyond what they actually have to, like, entertain you with. Mm-hmm. So I think based on my appreciation for The Gift, which had a very goofy trailer that I made fun of a lot, and then when I saw the movie, I was like, oh, that was actually really good. I think I'm going to really like this movie. It's a good premise. Mm-hmm. It, it feels different. Well, I say that. I was going to say it feels different from different horror films, but when the kid does knock over the fire and you get some quick cuts of it being more of a traditional horror film, that's when I'm like, it's just going to be like a scary like CGI monster that looks dumb. He's a creepy monster. Yeah, unless they can't afford it. And yeah. Then, and then we'll get like an It Follows situation where it's like, oh, yeah, we didn't really, we didn't really, we don't really yeah. know. We don't really know what it is. Like. I hope it's a mystery. Yeah, that would be way more fun. Ten points for the trailer doing a scare that actually got me. Like, when we watch this in the theater, when he knocks over the... the I never jump scare anymore. Like, mm-hmm. I've watched those jump scare movies so much that my nerves are numb from it. That was, like, the first one in a long time. I was like, oh! Because that quietness, like, really lulls you when in. He, to, like, when he knocked over the lantern? Yeah. Yeah. With the, like, false sense of security, you're thinking nothing's going to happen. Well, cause, and your tension is, like, Oh shit! No one make a noise. Mm-hmm. And then when he when he does it, yeah, you're like, You're violating the rules of the universe. No. So then here's my question: Do they get like a restart at all? Because if that <laughs> if that's like the first two or five minutes of the movie, and then the rest is just this thing haunting them and chasing them, I'm gonna be bummed out. I want like a. Wally, I, I know this is Pixar. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. It's okay, I've seen it. So. It's, my, it's my best example. In Wally, they, like, the first half of that film is just quiet. Like, Wally's picking up garbage. Yeah. He's just hanging out by himself. The first half of this movie is just them doing their daily routine, doing stuff, like setting up their trap, going about their day, and it's completely quiet, and they make that interesting. I'm, I'm all in on that. Mm. It's likely that it'll happen because it just looks like such a low-budget movie mm-hmm. that they're not going to be able to afford to do much else. Or if they do, they'll save it for the third act. And there's so it seems like there's so much tension in this concept of like, well, what if they get in an argument? What if someone gets lost? What if mm-hmm. someone has to fart? I'm just saying. Uh, like, There's all these ways to violate the law of the universe in fun ways that just teasing the idea of like it may be happening but not actually getting to it bringing the monster in. Like that... And see, that could be the end of the movie, yeah. like that that lantern scene. Like, I feel like there could be a lot of fun things to play with before we mm-hmm. even get the monster. Jessica, what is spooky to you? <laughs> In general, <laughs> ever thought of that? But not <laughs> not counting my delivery of that question. <laughs> 
people asking me what's on a, on, a, yeah, on a scale of not scared at all to Devin whispering to you. <laughs> bugs. Like, bugs. In general. Just so I could, really dislike bugs. We could have a them situation. It's just yeah. giant ants. Or spiders. Spiders, I'm with you. Have I gone on my spider? It could be a spider. Ramp? That would be the yes. only way that it makes sense for it to not hurt the railing, but also hurt the wall. Because <laughs> it walked on the wall and yeah. dragged its fangs across yeah. it. Have we had a big spider movie in a while? I don't think so. There's like some B horror movies with spiders. Yeah, I haven't, I haven't seen like a theatrical release <laughs> spider movie in a long time. I read that as B movies <laughs> with, with spiders. Joe Sanko? Like spiders <laughs> are riding some spiders bees. are eating the bees. Yeah. <laughs> Here's my thing about spiders. Jessica, back me up on this. <laughs> They're the worst. They're the worst because <laughs> this is why. They're too powerful. Yeah, listeners, <laughs> take a drink. They, they are too powerful. They can do everything. They're big. They're small. They're fast. They're poisonous. Some can fly. Some can go in the water. Some yeah. have fangs. They can make webs <laughs> that can, like, carry anything. You're safe nowhere. No. You can't be safe. They go in your mouth. You swallow spiders all the time. I probably swallowed one during this podcast. Could, <laughs> could, if I shot you into space, would you be okay? Would you feel safe? No, because they can survive in space, Sean. They are <laughs> They're too tardigrade. powerful. <laughs> They're I just too powerful. do believe I will die when a spider touches me. Yeah. Like that. That's a belief that you have? Yeah. Oh, okay. Like because if it, <laughs> it touches me, I, I even though I have been touched by spiders and I didn't die, mm-hmm. but I still, every time I see them, that's my instant reaction. If this touches me, I will perish. Oh, perish. Where did that come <laughs> from? Where did you uh, that? I actually had a spider rock on my face when I was a kid and it was a tarantula. Like Home Alone style. Wait, how, why, where were you that tarantulas were? Home Alone style, Sean. Oh, sorry. In a house <laughs> yes, by yes. herself. You were <laughs> trying to rob a house. A little kid was defending it. I get it. Sorry. No, Stupid I lived question. in Mexico for a while. And one just crawled over your face. And yeah. Like, hey, how's it going? Yeah, no. It was like, I think there was like a lot of baggage with it too because my dad was, there was like a, uh, web above my bed mm-hmm. and, and my dad was like it's gonna be fine nothing's gonna happen I'll knock the web down I'm sure the spider's gone so I was like oh trust in my parents oh wait no mm-hmm. I wake up and it's like on it's my like you bed. took my home I'm gonna crawl on your bed wait yeah. tarantulas have webs I it was I don't know if it was a tarantula it was some horribly terrifying like Central American evil big as a baseball face size yeah. spider and it's like you who took my home. Yeah. They're like elephants, they never forget. Yeah. <laughs> They've got to blame someone. I'm sorry that happened to you. That sounds okay. terrifying. <laughs> All right, so I was six. Well, it, obviously, it stayed with you. <laughs> and I'll never be six again. <laughs> <laughs> I've sworn off being six because of that. I'm fine with spiders. I just, I know six year olds are weak. Okay, write me the ending of this movie real quick, guys. Did. Did I you... think it's spiders. spiders. It's spiders. Okay, so a bunch of spiders live in the big red silo. Yeah. And that's what they come out when they because the, everything <laughs> is a web. See, I don't They're even want They're just tiny spiders that become a giant spider. Yes. Like you know a what? spider king. Guys, we got to stop. I don't want to play in this space right now. <laughs> You're going to kill me the nightmares. The heebie <laughs> Let's just talk about something. Let's talk about ghosts. Mm-hmm. Ghosts are fine. It's a ghost. Casper's um, a ghost. He's he's friendly. I had a huge crush on Casper. <laughs> Devin Sawa. Oh, the Casper when he turns into a, a yeah boy. Yeah. yeah. That movie is yeah. Was that like an awakening movie for you? Uh no, because Devin Sawa was already in Now and Then. Okay. So I feel like it was a continuation of. Yeah, I feel like yeah. I I hear that movie dropped a lot. The like Casper mm-hmm. movie. Casper, because Christina Ricci is the female yeah. Yeah. lead in that one, right? That, both yeah. of those. Both of the yeah, I think yeah. both of them awoken a lot of things in me. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> it was like, yeah. oh, I like girls and boys. This is, and, I'm understanding everything and, now. <laughs> and weirdly, ghosts. This is... Yeah, I really wanted a ghost boyfriend as a child. I don't know why. Because, mm-hmm. I mean, that makes perfect sense. Ghost boyfriend? That's like in the title why that's so great. You yeah. can he just send him away when you don't <laughs> want him. Just get out of your ghost boyfriend. Jessica, do you write at all? Because you should write ghost boyfriend. Ghost boyfriend. That's oh, aren't yeah. they, I think a song that somebody else wrote. Really? Yeah. Damn. I think you can do it better. <laughs> Channel your inner Christopher Pike yeah. and come up yes. with a series of books. Call it a ghost 
Beyonce. Um, Ghost Beyonce. The other day I was joking around with Lane about uh, writing a movie called Ghost Guard. The <laughs> Coast Guard, that's a ghost Go on. guard. That it? It's all I got so far. This I don't know if title. the ghost is it's like the threatening. Boyfriend. It's some. It's probably someone's boyfriend. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't know if the ghost is the threatening aspect or the crime solving aspect. Like, well, I'm a coast guard trying to do my job, but I'm also a ghost. Like, I'm not exactly sure how this movie breaks down. A, I think he's a ghost guard. So he's, like, he's maybe, doing his job. Maybe he guards ghosts. Ooh, oh, now yeah. we're talking. Like, maybe living people are really shitty to ghosts. They're always and, sitting on them and, like, yeah. knocking shit out of their hands. Where you, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and They're the not ghost. resolving things for them. <laughs> and where you go where you die, it's under the sea. Okay. Duh. Okay. Yeah. Duh, Sean. Hmm. I don't know. I guess I gotta <laughs> get you guys in on this. This is a teaser trailer. Yeah. They're gonna ruin this on the full trailer. Can't watch they? the full trailer. I think They're we gotta gonna make a pact. The three of us gotta promise each other we're not gonna watch the full trailer. But it's our duty, Sean. No, I think we gotta <laughs> we gotta live by the code of the movie babies and like no one enough is enough. Because in the in the full trailer, which is not a, a tenant of being a movie <laughs> baby at all. <laughs> They're gonna show the monster. Yes. They're gonna show. Oh, here's its weaknesses. Like, oh, you. Here's how we get out of all the tricky spots. We're gonna find out if there are neighbors or if they're alone. Yes. Like, I don't need to know any of that stuff until I walk in on April fourteenth and watch this movie. Like, it's got. That's a, a long time too. I am, yeah, but I've done it so far with the Star Wars shit. I haven't oh, seen yeah? any of that shit. Mm. Not that I care if it gets spoiled, but or that I would even understand if. Like, <laughs> I like that. That's where you're like, <laughs> Star Wars. Nope. <laughs> that's my movie. No, no, not at all. Like, but, like, as far as one that's being shoved down my throat, and I think I've heard that, like, the newest trailer spoils that, like, Princess Leia is alive or something. I don't know. Yeah, but, don't like... Know. Um, like, she never died in real life? <laughs> she's, she's been alive to make these Star Wars movies the whole time. It, it was like, just death. a big, like, promo that she... Like, like, <laughs> More people will see the movie. Gorilla marketing. Yeah, yeah, that's good. Uh, before we wrap up, is there... A creature that doesn't, that's sensitive to noises? Here's my thought. I'm trying to think. We were riffing about what all the monsters this could be. Did you ever see the movie Night of the Lepus? Mm-mm. Giant no. bunny rabbits. Okay. It's very cute. It's a very cute horror movie, but it's just like you would think, like them or whatever, but replace the ants with giant bunny rabbits, and then they had to film them in slow motion, like hopping and being cute to make it look at all threatening. But they got those big ears. Jesus. Gotta watch this movie. Imagine this movie. They're scared of this noise. You Mm -hmm. see, like, the giant claw mark. Mm -hmm. You see, like, they're in the barn and they're like, what is this giant shit? Like, this pebble rock. This big pellet, yeah. This big (laughs) pellet. What is this? All the carrots in the garden have been. (laughs) Yeah, like, all, like, really slow. Like, where are the carrots? I don't know. (laughs) And then. The lights go off, you hear a knock, <laughs> open the door. They don't even, like, Donnie Darko it. It's just, <laughs> like, an Easter bunny. How is the bunny knocking if it's that soft little paws? <laughs> it's his pat, his it's paws. Just, just... I like this idea. I really like the idea of fake-out movie. Like, if everything is going to be derivative of something else, if we're in that era... Package it to me in a way that I don't figure out what it is yeah. until yeah. the end of the movie. Like, make this a Night of the Lepus reimagining that's called A Quiet Place to fool me. I want a Nightmare on Elm Street movie where I don't know Freddy's in it until the last ten that minutes. That would be amazing. Yeah. And this is, like, the same reason people love Tim Curry's It, even though that TV movie is awful. It's, yeah, super boring. It, it's, it's because he's... Looks like a regular clown. Mm-hmm. And, like, that's what makes it scary. A bunny? <laughs> Do you want it to be I a mean, little bunny or a giant? No, I mean, he's or like... a person in an Easter bunny? <laughs> yeah, oh, okay, that's okay. what I'm picturing. Like a okay. person, yeah. like, he's up on... He's bipedal and he's, like, he's up. Yeah. And he's he has up. the ears. Hey, guess what, family? I'm and, up. And, and I'm the hear, Easter bunny. You hear... I don't the birth, the birth of Bambi. <laughs> He's just super turned on. (laughs) (laughs) 
<laughs> All right, we got to rate this okay, movie. Okay, let's rate it. Uh, same Bachelor number three, same rating system, <laughs> same answer. Give me your your likes and dislikes about A Quiet Place, and let me know if it's uh, Isle of Robots, In Space with Zombies, or Like a Lot. I know that's I, misleading. I liked it. I, I Love Robots is the worst. <laughs> a lot. Like a lot. Like, like a, a lot. lot. Like a lot. You did it. I, yeah. Well done. I mean, it could be really disappointing. Might be. But we don't know that yet, so I'm just going to assume <laughs> that, that it's bunny spiders. This reminds me that it could be like the other Cloverfield movie, the like Cloverfield Lane mm-hmm. movie. Oh, yeah. Which I wanted to be better than it was. Oh, you didn't like you that didn't one? like it? I, no, I like parts of it. Okay, but yeah, yeah. I But what you were talking about with like figuring it out, like I figured it all out yeah. way in advance. You knew there was going to be aliens even when I they were knew, sitting in I the knew, bunker? Yeah, I figured, I was like, oh, here's a twist, here's, I just figured it out. Okay. And, yeah, well, any movie where want, you're like trying to guess it, or like, yeah, you're giving yeah. me answers, it messes it up. I want, I want a movie that I don't know ahead of time. Yeah. Yeah. I hope that's what this does. This could be that. We don't watch any of the trailers. Yeah, I think yeah. we need to use lesson. Let's make a pact that we don't. We'll just turn <laughs> I mean, a blind eye. We're kind of shooting trailers. our own show in the foot here, though. We'll review something else. There's a lot of Tyler Perry <laughs> movies to review. I, I just don't want to send the message to our audience like, hey, don't watch trailers. They're bad. They're going to ruin the movie I for think you. I do want to send that message. I think that's what we've been actively trying to tell people by doing this show is like, don't watch trailers. Let us watch them for you. Well, guess good. what? Spoiler alert, they all suck. Yeah. And the you movies that they shit. represent. I'm also going to give this like a lot. I do agree. Oh, I don't know if you said this necessarily, but I'll say it for us. It's going to suck. It's going to be a bad movie. <laughs> it's gonna, we're going to be disappointed in it. But as far as it being an effective trailer yeah. especially in a crowded horror market especially indie horror market this one stands out mm-hmm. listen closely never make a sound <laughs> can't hear you they can't haunt you sean they can't haunt you that's what it says yeah so they si- is ghosts silence is survival hmm. it seems like a hashtag if they can't haunt you they they're not ghosts you. they can't haunt you only if you make a sound, Sean. Can't feed them after midnight. Are they Can't. gremlins? <gasps> they might be gremlins. It's gremlins. They gremlins. <laughs> you got it. I hope it's a giant silence to survival and then silence your cell phone. <laughs> just, For survival. It's, it's just, just <laughs> the movie that they play to remind you. Yeah. <laughs> it's just like you just sat through an hour and a half ad to silence your cell phone. I think that's what I'm saying is what I want. <laughs> I want this like that. <laughs> Because it's millennials who are always on their phones, right? right? And so, like, teach them a lesson. What movies are they yeah. like going towards? It's these local, like, low budget horror films. Like, all right, they're not getting our PSAs before the movies. Yeah. The '80s taught us not to have sex at summer camps, and the 2017s yeah. are teaching us not to yeah. play on our phones in movie theaters. It's like every time you work, you make a noise. In the movie theater. <laughs> um, I, don't, I, don't know. I kinda wanna live in this universe just because then I would never have to wake up to an alarm clock. Yeah. Yeah. And like that. no one could ever fault me for being yeah, late. I'd be like What are you gonna do, Bob? You want a monster to come after us? <laughs> I'll knock on this door right now. <laughs> no, 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 no. I realized that we're recording and then I made gestures. I I <laughs> I, I, I saw it and it was like, how do I well it's I'm, it's in the moment. You gotta be here. I do that all the time. I mean <laughs> I can make a second <laughs> podcast of me doing gestures. I think that's called a YouTube TV show. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. There's a horror movie uh, deaf woman who is a writer who's in a cabin who's being stalked by a killer, and it's called Hush. And I think it's still mm. on Netflix. And if this is an appealing premise to you, I'm curious what you guys would think about Hush. But my rating for... I just incited the monster. No, no. <laughs> Fuck! No, no, no! We're going to get haunted. My rating for A Quiet Place... Is also like a lot. We did it. We did it. We swept. <laughs> it's a great trailer. It's a yes. teaser. I like a teaser because I don't get the whole trailer, and that's what I want. And in a thriller, I don't want to know much more than the premise. It's short. There's no music. The cast is small. It looks low budget. I'm into all those things. The scare got me. This movie, I think we are all in agreement, is that it hinges on what's going to happen. 
Like the only reason that's going to get your butt in the theater yeah. is like what mm-hmm. what's going to happen. And once you know, it's over. Like, but I, yeah, you, I'm not going to give you my money because you gave it to me for free. Yeah, Avengers new trailer. I don't care about what's going to happen. Like, and I don't care about it at all anyway. Yeah. But they're banking on the fact that I want to see the full five minutes of this slugfest or the full mm-hmm. five minutes of Elizabeth Olsen like doing a magic trick or whatever the fucking shit's going to be in that movie. I think it's really smart for these little movies that don't have much to sell, sell you even less. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And we just have to, and hopefully that gets us out of our like little rabbit holes about like, well, come and come and show me everything your movie's got. And then maybe I'll come to the theater. Like uh, a quiet place. It's a movie that sounds like we like. Can we honor it by seeing how long we can be quiet for? Yeah. All right. Oh, Starting now. Oh, okay. You already fucked it up. I already fucked it up. Not very long. And that was... <laughs> We're dead. <laughs> and that... <laughs> I, would, I would dive in this world. You oh, yeah. Sure. Oh, like, yeah. I've, I've been invited to meditation retreats before. Ah. I didn't go because I knew I would fail it. Because you're the farting kid. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because so I fart all over their <laughs> novice day or whatever. <laughs> I did go to summer camp one year and... Um, they were doing these challenges of like, can you be quiet all day long? And maybe now, in retrospect, as I'm telling this story, that wasn't a campfire challenge. Yeah. That was a personal challenge directed for me. <laughs> but I was quiet for three days straight or something wow. like that. Uh, and I, at one point, I had wow. to enter the water and exit the water silently. And I was like, I'm a ninja. And I was like, I'm also wasting my camp. He fucking got you. <laughs> yeah. That's good. so yeah. good. I got like a little like necklace at the end of it. And that was. <laughs> they got you so yeah. good. That sucks. That makes me so happy. <laughs> Three days. And you were like, oh, I'm, I'm fucking winning. Ninja. I'm winning. I'm a ninja. Yeah. Bad news. <laughs> um, Alright, well I guess you were in this quiet yeah. place. Yeah. That was a quiet place. <laughs> and that's the episode! <laughs> Well, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for another Movie Babies. Uh, you've been a great audience. Hey. Uh, we'll be ap- here after the show signing uh, our own our, dicks. Our dicks. <laughs> we'll, be sign- we'll be autographing our own dicks. <laughs> Just our initials. That's all that can fit. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Uh, we have fun here on Movie Babies. Hey, we, we joke. <laughs> But we, it's true. We still joke. What did we say at the beginning of the show? There's truth in every joke. <laughs> We're actually going to do that. Oh, no, shit. I'm scribbling on my own penis for, as we speak. You can't edit that out because it's happening in real life. <laughs> it's, you can't it's edit a, real life, Devin. It was a reality show. <laughs> movie Babies is a reality show. What happens when babies stop being movie and start getting real? That was a fun one. That was a fun one. Jessica, bring, dropping the knowledge. Yeah, dropping the knowledge that she didn't remember anything about A Wrinkle in Time. That movie, I swear, <laughs> there might be like a bear sting bear situation. I'd like to know Man- more. Mandela effect there. Interesting. If you remember the plot of A Wrinkle in Time, read Tweet it. us, yeah. please. Please tweet us. Please tweet speaking, us. Speaking of tweets, we have a Twitter. We do. And it's now famously verified by Dan Harmon. Dan Harmon, we're on the map. <laughs> Also, if Dan Harmon brought you over to the movie, babies, give us a shout out. Oh, yeah. We want to know about that. Uh, Also, Sean, Mm -hmm. we did it. We we have a milestone. Uh, 100 likes on Facebook. Oh, man. That has been like stuck in my craw for a long time now that that between the two of us, we couldn't get 100 people to like our stupid podcast. We were just stuck for so long. (laughs) And then Tasha, she she did it. Movie baby Tasha put it over... The limit. Over the legal limit. <laughs> we now have 101. Look at wow. that. Overachievers. I'm pretty sure I, when you told me that, I looked to see who had recently liked us, and it was her boyf- her ex-boyfriend <laughs> and her roommate. <laughs> her, like, her, yeah. her next-door neighbor. Right? <laughs> well, which puts her as, like, the best guest we've yeah. ever had. Absolutely. Just twisting the arms of those we couldn't reach. Thanks, Tasha. Thank you, Tasha. Really appreciate that. Uh, if you too would love us, if you too want to be, if you too want, if you like the band U two, 
And in addition to that, you want to be a liker of us on Facebook? Is that where you're going with that? If you want to be a liker or a supporter, like, we could use the help. Yeah. If we can get to 200. If we can get to 200, I'll retire. If we can get to 200, I will give you a framed picture of my signed dick. <laughs> it would be wallet size. <laughs> That's me doing a gym in the office thing. I'm huh? looking at the I'm looking at the cell phone right now that I use as a microphone. Uh, well, you can find us at our website, and from the website you can rate us and you can subscribe to us. It's www.moviebabies.com. Ooh. And Sean, yes, when you don't have time to watch the two minute trailer, trust no one. Banned. <laughs> That's the movie babies. <laughs> <laughs>